Are you a wannabe prince of Persia no less? But you simply can't find your way out of the dungeon. Or worse, you keep falling into chasms, getting bitten by the chompers, skewered by the spikes or stabbed by the guards. Don't worry, I'm here to help you. I've put together a small guide on how to make your life in the dungeon a little easier and give you a fighting chance. This is not a walkthrough though, there are plenty of those out there by skilled gamers, so I encourage you to check them out. I'm only going to give you some tips, so you can learn the methods and decide for yourself how and where to apply them. Also, I won't show you the more uh, illegal tricks, <laughs> such as going through walls or closed gates. The Prince of Persia modding community has got those covered with small video clips and it's well worth a look. There will be a link in the description. I'm going to use the DOS version as an example, but most of these tips apply to most of the ports too, but not all. There will be, of course, some spoilers ahead, those really can't be helped. So be warned! Level Design the game is a 2D platformer that will take you through the dungeon and later on the palace. Your goal is simple, to get to the stairs that take you to the next level to eventually reach the princess. Some of the levels are quite maze-like and you might run into dead ends and might need a few tries before finding the best route. There are gates that can be opened by stepping on pressure plates in the floor, but they close after a few seconds or when someone steps on the corresponding recessed ledge. Each level has an exit door that will need to be opened in the same way. Thankfully, that one stays open. Oh yes, one word of warning. In level 12, things aren't always going to work as expected, so keep an open mind when you get there. Level Architecture Now, we're going to get technical a bit, but just a bit. A level will be divided into multiple screens. Each screen itself is further divided according to a grid system. Yes, the animations are pretty smooth, but there is a grid and the princess movements will fit into it. It's not vital to keep it in mind though, but it might be useful for when you estimate distances. Let's see an example here. The grid for each screen is 10 by 3. We will call the grid divisions spaces from now on. Let's see how the princess movement takes place within this system. Moving horizontally. Let's take a look at the distances when moving horizontally. A careful step covers one space, while a running step is two spaces. Be careful about jumping though, because the prince will still make another small step after landing and it could cause you to fall if you end up right on the edge. A jump from a still position will land you after two spaces, while a jump with a running start will see you across three spaces. It is mandatory for each running jump to have at least three running steps before it. You will see that the prince will make those three steps even if you clicked on the jump button before he's done. That means that if you are very close to an edge and don't have the necessary running distance, the prince will not jump and just fall instead. If you run and jump and hold the shift button to grab onto the edge of the platform in front of you, you can make it four spaces across. But the jump over five spaces is impossible. In addition to this, jumping or crouching in place will move you a little bit forward as well, about a quarter of a space. So be careful when you're close to the edge, lest you should fall. There is a very useful mechanic in the game, whereby the prince's position is slightly adjusted if he is not aligned perfectly, but is close enough to a platform. You'll notice this in the way he shifts back a bit to grab onto a ledge above him, or when you do a running jump, even if you don't press the jump button at the very edge of a tile. Okay, is moving backwards without turning around possible, apart from this automatic adjustment? Well, yes, but only in combat mode, when the prince will always face his enemy, but can step forwards or backwards. He can also be involuntarily pushed back by a parry, about a third of a space, or a jab, a full space. The prince is able to do a slight turn in order to quickly change direction. This might be useful when you're in a hurry stepping carefully. One more thing to say about movement. If the prince is close to a pit, a chomper or a ledge that closes a gate, if you step carefully by holding down the shift key, 
he will only walk up to the very edge of it, then he will stop himself before taking the next step. However, keep in mind that he will only do it once and on the next attempt he will take that step, sometimes to his doom. And sometimes, very rarely, but it does happen, you might still be chomped, even if you only intend to carefully get close to the blades. Scary stuff. Moving vertically. What about moving vertically? Well, the prince can jump in place to grab a ledge above him and pull himself up, one grid row at a time. He can also descend through any gap in the floor, and there's no limit to how far down he might go. Of course, falling isn't without consequences. Falling for two spaces will take away a life point. Falling from any greater height will kill the prince instantly. Carefully climbing down by holding on to a ledge will cut down the distance by one space. Tips for movement. It's a good idea if you're just starting out to explore a bit. Not just to look for the exit, but you might also find some useful potions off the beaten path. Sometimes you might fall into a pit, but that's the risk of exploring. There are a few alternative routes at times as well, but often there is just one way to go. And if you feel like you keep missing the timings and the jumps, just keep practicing and you should get the hang of it. Now let's see some strategy ideas for pacing. Even if the game is timed and also the gates being open for a limited time might encourage a dashing forward approach, it's often a good idea to slow down in some places. For example, around the aforementioned spikes and chompers to reduce the risk of getting hurt. Also, when climbing down, doing so carefully instead of just stepping off into the chasm could mean saving a life point. Just in case you miscalculate or misclick, hold the shift button while jumping, so that if you are in danger of falling, but there is a ledge in front of you, you will grab it and can then pull yourself up. You might also notice that while holding on to the edge by his hands, the prince's body will sway back and forth for a while before he ultimately lets go on his own. You can take advantage of that swaying to direct his fall onto a certain ledge that might seem unreachable. And of course, while the prince is falling, you can always hold shift at any time to make him grab onto a ledge he'd be passing by, effectively breaking his fall. When you don't have the three spaces needed for a running jump, you can run in the opposite direction, do a quick sliding turn, then dash and leap merrily on your way. Quickly switching direction is also useful when you're about to fall off a platform. You can turn around in midair and grab onto the ledge by holding the shift button and then you can pull yourself up. Regarding the gates, I've mentioned that they will close again after a few seconds. You can crouch under a closing gate or if there is a drop in front of it, you can hang from the edge by your hands and pull yourself up and under it right before it closes completely. Ledges you may have noticed that the surface of the grid spaces we mentioned earlier is made up of ledges. The slightly raised ones can open a gate. The slightly recessed ones can close a gate. A few of these can affect multiple gates at once. Some of the raised ledges can open the door that lets you climb up to the next level. That door might not be close to its pressure plate, but it will always make a specific sound that can be heard from anywhere within the level. Lest we forget, there are also ledges that fall as soon as you step on them. If you run, you will not drop with them immediately, but if you stop on one, you will. Sometimes, a guard will push you back onto such a loose tile and you will fall with it. If the tile falls on a potion, it will break it. If it's on a triggering ledge or one with spikes, it will disable it. The respective gate affected by the triggering ledge will open, if it was an opening tile, but in any case, it will not close on its own anymore. Other times, you need to make a loose tile from above you fall in order to climb up. It might fall on your head, which will take away a life point. Tips for ledges Be careful about ledges that are not supported from below, as they might be unstable. You can jump in place anywhere, and the loose tiles on the platform you are on and the one above will rattle, so you can easily identify and avoid them if necessary. You will quickly learn to not step on the ledges that close gates. You can often jump over them quite easily. In fact, you can also jump over loose tiles too, in case you think they might cause you issues later. However, sometimes making them fall might turn out to be beneficial. A good thing to remember is that the triggering ledge responds to weight, so if you place a heavy object on it, you would be disabling it. 
This could be a loose slab that you could knock down from above, or even the body of a guard that you strategically kill right on top of it. Watch out though, if you thus disable an opening ledge and happen to step onto the corresponding closing one, you will have no way of reopening that gate. Oh, and don't fall along with the tile on top of spikes, they will still be deadly the first time around. And once is quite enough. I've mentioned before that, at times, you will need to cause the loose tile from above your head to fall in order to climb up through there. You might be able to avoid getting hurt by it by crouching at the right time or by positioning yourself just out of range, but you might find it difficult to make that work reliably. Obstacles There are two types of inanimate obstacles, jumpers and spikes. The chompers chomp rhythmically whenever you are on the same level, while the spikes are hidden in the floor and you can only see the holes through which they will come out whenever you are near. A curious thing is that the guard that has fallen in the spikes is effectively disabling them, so they will not hurt you anymore. Tips for spikes and chompers You can go through the chompers at the right time and run up to or edge your way to the spikes to make them come out in front of you. Once they are out, the spikes will not hurt you unless you fall from a height onto them. You can also jump over them safely, but running or jumping through chompers requires good timing. Potions You start with the 3 health points maximum, which can be increased along the way. These health points will regenerate fully at the start of each level. There are 3 colors of potion, red, blue and green. Small red potions will replenish a depleted health point while blue will take it away. The big red potions will fill out all the health points while also giving you an extra one to your maximum. These are very useful to have. Of course, you can't just take them with you for later though, you have to drink them on the spot. There is also a big green potion. That one is interesting. In level 7, it will allow you to float downwards gently without taking full damage. In level 9, it will turn your screen upside down. Don't worry, there is another one close enough that will restore your world to its proper orientation. No need to rotate your monitor. There are also copy protection potions that appear after completing level 1. These have a letter on top and you need to drink the potion according to the instructions. If you drink the wrong one, you lose 2 health points. Tips for potions Don't drink the blue potions. Don't drink the small red potions when you are at full health, as they will not do anything and you might need them later. Always drink the big red potions, if you see any lying around. Some of these are out of the way though, so you will lose some time getting to them. Drink the green potion in level 7 before jumping, but don't drink the green potion in level 9, unless you don't mind wasting some time getting the second one, or you're one of those bad people who can comfortably hang upside down from the ceiling while gaming. Fighting. In level 1 you will find a sword, which will be your weapon throughout the game. Owning it gives you the ability to automatically enter combat mode in the presence of an enemy. If you don't, then one hit from them and you're dead. If you're in fighting mode, you will lose a health point and you are also pushed back each time you are hit. Like I've already mentioned, each blocked hit also moves you back a bit, and you can also take a step back intentionally tips for fighting. A good strategy is to always block first, since most guards will come at you trying to strike. Then you need to hit quickly, while they are often not paying attention. I usually block once, then hit, then block again. But don't stop there. Keep spamming those keys until the fight sequence is over and the guard stops to breathe. Sometimes he only hits once, sometimes you have a sequence of 4 or 5 moves each. To play it safe, you might want to consider not advancing since you can get the timing wrong and get hit. There is a bit of a rhythm if you pay close enough attention. The poses between the guards' advances will usually be of a similar duration, so you know when you yourself can move. Some guards are more skilled than others, meaning that they block more and will hit more times before pausing. Sometimes there are interesting strategies for dealing with guards. Let's see them. You can actually skip past the first guard on the first level without even fighting him by jumping at the right place. That spot is in the middle of the room he's in, a bit after the bricks showing in the back wall. It's tricky, but it really helps to shave a few minutes off that hourglass, as you will not need to go all the way to the left to get a sword. 
and don't worry, you will still have it on the next levels. In fact, exchanging plays with a card is possible during fighting mode as well, by moving close enough without striking. This is useful when you want to push him in a pit or trap, or if you simply want to put your sword away and run off. There's nothing cowardly about that, don't worry. If you're trying to avoid a guard, here are some things to keep in mind. He will not jump over gaps or climb up or down after you when he's not in combat mode. However, as soon as you're on the same platform and he has a direct route to you, he will get into a fighting stance and come after you. If you want to back off and get away through a gap behind you, the best way is to put your sword away and jump down. If you simply walk backwards while in combat mode, he might follow you. It's possible to climb up from below in front of a guard, backing up until you fall, but grabbing onto the edge of the platform and pulling yourself up while he falls instead. You need to get your timing right though in order to make this work. Guards can also be useful. You can prop a gate open with them. I've covered that before. And dead guards don't roll over in their sleep. <laughs> of course, as I've already mentioned, a strategy to finish a fight quicker is to push the guard back into a pit or trap rather than take the time and dance with him. Tips for special kinds of enemies There are a few enemies that are a little bit different. An interesting enemy is the skeleton in level 3. He has no health points and will not die. Instead of trying to kill him, you need to advance towards him so that he is pushed back each time you hit him. He will eventually fall off the platform. You will need to do this twice to get him out of your way. There is a guard in level 8 who always keeps the same distance from you. In fact, he will move backwards or forwards to match your movements. If you get within range, he will hit immediately, otherwise he will not attack first. If your strategy is to let them come to you, it won't work here. You need to advance, block, then you can hit. Another one that is interesting is a guard you need to sneak past in level 8. He's very close to the right edge of the screen where you're supposed to come in through, and even if you enter slowly, if he knows you are coming and faces you, you won't have the time to draw your sword and will be killed instantly. Instead, you will need to sneak by when first going underneath him on the same screen so he doesn't sense you and doesn't turn towards you. Actually, earlier in the same level, you will see a guard also turning around while you are running by below, so that is your hint. And who knows, you might need to apply this lesson later on too. One more enemy which I find particularly fascinating is the Shadow Prince. He is created when the prince jumps through a mirror. He will then show up a few times and play tricks on you, such as stealing a bit health potion or closing a gate in your face. But he's still a part of you. You will eventually get to fight him in level 12, but you will discover that each hit you give him depletes one of your own health points. So, you need to put your sword away and run towards him, and you will merge into one being once again. And what about Jafar, your worst enemy, the one who is planning to marry the princess by force and take control of the country? Uh, he's nothing interesting actually, and falls like an autumn leaf. Quite disappointing. The mouse. Now, I did say that everything in this game is out to get you, but you do actually have a small ally who comes to your rescue once. The princess sends her pet mouse to come open a gate for you in level 8, otherwise you will be stuck in the same place forever. Such a nice little mousy. Tips for the mouse. Give him some cheese. Okay, I'm only kidding here. There's no cheese in the game, unfortunately. <sighs> Well, this is about it for the Prince of Persia 1 tips. I have compiled these from my own experience and from the knowledge of other random people on the internet. Thank you, random people on the internet. If I've missed any, please share your knowledge in the comments. This video is dedicated to my good friend at the YouTube channel, All The New Video Games, who has always been a great support and inspiration for me. Thank you. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. It's well worth a visit. And I will say thank you for watching, and I hope my video helped you. Goodbye!